Now we just need to get this section into orbit around Duna, and we will be all set. Now we're just going to time warp here a little bit after we extend the antennas. I can't time warp because I'm moving on the ground. That doesn't make any sense. I can physical time warp, but I can't use the other time warp. Oh, well, that I don't have any orbit lines. We need to redo this. This doesn't make any sense. This is, I don't know what kind of bug. This is Echo 3, and by request, let's discuss NASA Ames' proposed Red Dragon mission. This video's topic was recommended by YouTuber Andy Black. From 2011 to 2016, SpaceX and NASA's Ames conceptualized different missions to Mars. They would use a modified Dragon capsule launched aboard a Falcon Heavy. Theoretically, this modified Red Dragon capsule could land up to two tons on the surface of the Red Planet. This is about twice the weight of the Curiosity rover. Since SpaceX didn't successfully land their first stage booster until December of 2015, this mission was envisioned with entirely expendable boosters. It wasn't until January of 2017 that recovery of first stage boosters became something other than an experiment. It finally became more of a routine process for SpaceX. And then a few months later, SpaceX stopped working on their Red Dragon project altogether in favor of a much larger ship the Starship that we are familiar with that's under development today. One of the proposed mission sets for the Red Dragon would be a sample return mission from the surface of Mars. In 2014, it was known that the Mars 2020 rover was going to be collecting samples, so it was thought that maybe the Red Dragon mission could drop down to the surface with a return vehicle to help recover those samples and bring them back to Earth. However, this concept received no funding from NASA, so I don't really know any more about what the details would have been, other than we can try and recreate that in the game. At this point in my game, I don't have any other crafts in orbit around Duna, so in the trunk section of my Dragon capsule, I have a relay antenna so that I can maintain control over my remote lander. I used arrow braking to initially slow down to help me get into orbit around Duna, and then I'll be using a burn here at my apoapsis to get into a circular orbit around the planet, and then I will switch control back over to the lander section. The lander is already on a suborbital trajectory, so we don't have to really do anything to line up our landing. At this point in the development of the Dragon capsule, it was not going to be using any parachutes to assist with the landing but was going to use its Super Draco thrusters to slow down to safely land on the Red Planet. In the near future mods, they do have something very similar to the Super Draco thruster that you can use, and they also have something like a Dragon Capsule that you can use. For my little cargo lander here, I'm using a couple Twitch engines on the side to help slow this thing down. Since there was no development done on the actual sample return vehicle, we can only speculate as to what it would have been like. But for my mission, I was able to pack all of my science equipment, my fuel, and my return vehicle all nicely into this upper stage. Now that we are safely on the surface, we can begin conducting our different science experiments. Because this is a sandbox game, this doesn't really mean anything, but if you were playing a career or a science game, this would be a pretty good way to get science from the surface, and then you can collect all the science points from this, because we will be transferring these science experiments into the container unit on the top of my return vessel. You could even pair something like this with a rover and have the rover with a scanning arm or something and able to collect more science from around the area. And then with a grapple or a docking port, you could connect the two units again, transfer the science over to the return vessel, and then be able to take all of those science points back to Kerbin for the full amount instead of just the transmitted amount. We don't know exactly how the sample return mission would have worked, but perhaps the Mars Ascent vehicle would meet up with a Mars orbiter that would then take the samples back to Earth. Potentially around Earth, there would even be another vessel of which the samples would be transferred to that vessel, and then that would actually be the craft that lands back on Earth. For my mission, I'm just using a single craft to do the entire return back to Kerbin because the Delta V requirements are way less on this solar system than they are in the real solar system. 
in our case, it takes about 14 to 1500 meters per second to go from the surface of Duna to get back into orbit. And then it'll take between 650 to 750 meters per second of Delta V to go from orbit around Duna to get back to the surface of Kerbin. And based off of those numbers, it looks like I probably over-engineered my craft for what it needs to do, but I like to be a little bit more on the safe side and have plenty of margin for air because I'm not necessarily the best pilot in this game. Now we need to make a small course correction because we don't want to just enter Kerbin's sphere of influence, we also want to land back at Kerbin. So I'm going to make a small correction here so that we can come in and I want to hit Kerbin's atmosphere around 25 to 35 kilometers above the surface. Now if you looked at my craft, you'll notice that I don't have any kind of heat shielding. Since we're just coming from Duna, we're not actually going to be going that fast that I'll be able to make do fairly safely without any additional heat shielding. I'll just come in and have the engine come in first. If I were to have any problems with the re-entry heating, I don't think it would be a problem as far as the science is concerned because I've got the engine and the fuel tanks there clear on the bottom of the craft. If anything were to blow up, it would probably be those or maybe the batteries first thing. As long as the parachute is able to deploy and my science section there towards the top doesn't blow up, we'll be all right and have a successful mission. And it looks like we are. We are going to be able to recover all our science points. I am Echo3, and thanks for joining me on this discussion about the Red Dragon. I will see you next time. And if you have any recommendations for future content, please let me know.